Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And those of you that recall, I did a special broadcast just not too long ago. I believe it only aired on Patreon. This time, this broadcast, it will air on Patreon first. Uh, and then I will release this to the public. I think it is critical that the public is aware of this information. And this is about what you might, some have termed him as dog man, uh, bear man, all kinds of different expressions have been spoke about uh, this particular in, uh, creature that has been uh, uh, seen, that has uh, been uh, reports of uh, missing people. If you go to Dave Politis, uh, he wrote a book about, uh, I think it's 411 Missing is the name of his book, or Missing 411. And he did a, an in-depth study as a former police officer uh, into the missing people around national parks, around the nation, places like that, and he discovered a trend. Now, I've actually communicated with David back and forth in emails. Uh, he's not been willing to come on as of yet, but I have just gotten a report in about this creature and what this creature really is. It is, in fact, a special, excuse me, a, um, a super soldier project that's gone haywire. A super soldier project, the CIA, just recently has approached those in the government there to get funding to bring this project to an end. So we're going to be talking about this today. And, uh, and I ask if you would, please do not release this video to the public uh, or, or copy it until we've had a chance to do it ourselves. Uh, anyway, so I want to get into this with you guys uh, so you know a little bit more about what's going on, what has happened, but it is, in fact, a, a, a super soldier program that has gone very awkwardly wrong. And I, I think in one of our videos on Patreon, we spoke about how that uh, some of these super soldiers were dropped off even in Russia and China. Uh, they wanted to see how they would react. But the scary thing is, is that 17 of them were dropped off here in the United States in very remote locations so that the uh, military could experiment to see how their new super soldier was going to react. Now you say a super soldier, gosh, Steve, you're talking about they're describing this thing like a bear-like creature or a wolf-like creature. Uh, in one particular documentary, they call this the, the, the barilla. Um, We'll be bringing up that here as well. And, and I do, I keep in mind that in some cases, like even in the case of the this documentary here called Bar Barilla, the Kentucky uh, cryptid that kills Boogeyman Shiver. That's the name of the video there on Shiver Par Paranormal Documentary. We could be looking at two different types of things altogether, but there are some similar circumstances that happen in their documentary that they talk about. Um, that make me wonder if it's not actually one of our super soldiers that have that have caused this issue um, that, that they report on as well. But uh, evidently, though, the park ranger, the retired park ranger at Yellowstone that talks about this creature, clearly describes the creature exactly the way he really looks. Uh, and I say he, there are both men and women that volunteered in this program to have their DNA altered, to become these super soldiers, but it was like a metamorphosis. Uh, it was the most heinous, most uh, uh, egregious thing that could ever be done to humanity uh, and, to be, uh, and to alter a human being into, the, into this very bizarre creature. And I cannot help but wonder about the families, whether they even know that their son or their daughter participated in such programs uh, uh, or if they, you know, what were they told? Were they just told they, were, they died in battle? And these were special force soldiers that volunteered in this. And like I said, both men and women. And the idea was to create them where they could procreate and reproduce. Uh, and they did exactly that. When I was uh, in the discussion about this, though, I specifically asked well, if they were able to reproduce when did the program actually begin? And I was told that the program began back when Bill Clinton was still governor of Arkansas. In fact, Hillary Clinton was involved in the program. She was involved with the CIA. Uh, it was a CIA DARPA project. 
and uh, and it, like I said, was to create this super soldier uh, hybrid from DNA. Uh, and, and I'm going to get into all of that here in just a moment here. I've made extensive notes about this. But uh, crossing the DNA of lion, bear, and wolf into a human. And uh, ending up with a very bizarre creature. I do have one photo of this creature. And I'm going to share that here with you in just a moment here. Uh, this was done by the Brazilian police, so it lets me know that they were also, uh, dis, you know, released into Brazil. Uh, that was actually killed. We've had, we know that we've had two that have been killed. Uh, the initial soldiers that participated, though, were uh, uh, they were they were put transmitters on them. They're they're tracked. They know their locations. Uh, they know their heartbeats. If anything happens to them, they know exactly what happens if they were to die. They know they they're dead. And they're able to dispatch um, uh, CIA uh, individuals there. Not not the Men in Black, but because uh, the CIA does have a Men in Black program. But these are CIA handlers uh, that would that will stay living in areas close to where they know the initial soldiers were released at uh, and tracking them. And uh, and of course, if something happens, they're actually dispatched. And there was one such case where one was hit by a truck. Uh, the trucker believed that he had killed it. He was panicked. He was fearful. Uh, he goes on down the road a little ways, but then he gets nervous. He thinks, oh gosh, what did I run into? What happened? He turned the vehicle around. By the time he got back, those CIA handlers were already on the scene. Now, he just thought they were tourists, uh, you know, uh, you know, or somebody traveling through the area saying, gosh, what, what happened? Did you see that? What was it, you know? But from what I understand, that particular one actually survived or either they removed the body, i.e. one or the other. I don't know exactly which one it was. Um, anyway, uh, so the CIA, what brought all this up, uh, the, the, where I got into this as well, was that the CIA had approached the government uh, for funding. And of course, they couldn't go before Congress or the Senate because they're trying to keep this out of their eyes and ears. But they approached the government wanting to know where they could glean money from different government projects uh, uh, and, and to uh, for, a, for a program that they needed to cancel or to, or to terminate. And at first, they did not want to disclose what the program was about. They were very hush-hush about it. And, but already, uh, there had been a lot of reports that had been coming across different desks and things. Uh, in Washington about the disappearance of uh, the, the people in national parks. Uh, we had been getting reports uh, in Washington uh, about uh, pentagrams outside of caves. In fact, there's one going on right now actively. The U.S. government, uh, along with the military, have been investigating this particular creature, which actually is uh, the, uh, the super soldiers, uh, down in a national park, I wanted to say, if I remember right, it was in Colorado, and um, they would not disclose the location, though, about where this was happening at or which national park that was in. I mentioned that on one of the broadcasts, and you guys shared with me some of your thoughts as where that was. But um, they were looking uh, they were, they were looking there because they had found pentagrams even outside the caves where these creatures were discovered at. Um, so, but but... To, to, to make a long story not too, too long, uh, they were requesting $10 million for funding to bring the project to an end. And basically what they want to do is to retrieve these super soldiers uh, and basically euthanize them is what they're going to do. Uh, but they figure that they're going to suffer casualties just trying to bring them back in. And that's because uh, they've not been able to control them. When they volunteered, they were, of course, fully human at the time, but the metamorphosis was so great, turning more like an animal, that, uh, that the soldier, although it did achieve what they wanted, to be able to kill with just, uh, you know, an unbelievable uh, um, deadly force, but it changed even the way they thought and their brain works, although they do retain the human side of being very manipulative, being able to be able to troubleshoot things of that nature there. The animal instinct part of the brain took over and uh, made it to where they could not give commands or control them. And that's made a major problem in this, this whole program. 
So, uh, you know, I mentioned to you guys in another broadcast once before that they had ended the super soldier program in favor of, um, of putting the funding into AI. Now, oddly enough, too, by the way, uh, these super soldier programs were being done in Ukraine. Think of that. Um, so uh, not not in every case, but yes, Ukraine was also one of the places where this stuff was was being done at. So uh, this was a very unorthodox program, and it is unknown on how many um, special forces uh, soldiers participated in the actual program initially. Uh, but we do know that uh, that there were 17 that were released here in the United States. And like I said to you before, you have to go back during the days that Bill Clinton was president, or excuse me, when he was governor of Arkansas, and uh, him and uh, his wife Hillary. And this is when the program was initiated. And I know that he was governor from 1983 to 1992, so I don't know exactly what year that would have been. But let's just say 1990, for example, you're talking 32 years ago. So if these uh, super soldiers were procreating, which we know they were, we know they've had offspring. The offspring do not have tags. They have no tracking devices on them whatsoever. So the government has no clue as to where they've gone to. And now they're full of grown adults by now. And are they uh, procreating as well and have created more of these things? So as you can see, this has become a great major uh, blunder, not to mention, I mean, just the thinking of the sin that, that is committed by doing this to another human is just un, unfathomable. Um, so at, at any rate there, um, let's see here. Uh, the U.S. government, uh, they, you know, they, they wanted to kill the super, well, we already talked about that. And, uh, and Hillary being involved in it. Now, Hillary, her involvement, we know that uh, just from putting the pieces of the puzzle together because of the pentagram and stuff, uh, it is believed that Hillary was the one that it was actually teaching them the witchcraft and the demonic uh, things at that time. And so I wanted to be able to share that with you. Like I said, they, they, were, they, were, they were bred to be able to just kill indiscriminately. Uh, without any any regard to life whatsoever. Now that part was achieved, and uh, we know that they were dropped. Uh, some were dropped off in Afghanistan. Uh, the Afghans, though, the Taliban actually believed that it was the jinn, which is like a spirit or a ghost that they were seeing uh, when these things would attack. But uh, that you know they did have some success there. But again, they had no ability to control them uh, as far as what would actually take place, etc. <clears throat> so. Let's see here. <clears throat> and and the, the actual, the real goal, as it was expressed to me, was to create a, was to reproduce a killing machine that had the ability to reproduce. And that's exactly what they were able to do. I want to play this little clip here uh, <clears throat> uh, where Afton Fairchild, a journalist that uh, covered in Kentucky, uh, for, for three years there, talked about a killing spree that was happening there. And when I play this, keep in mind, uh, I also was told that in Tennessee, in the Appalachian Mountains there, uh, on the eastern border, they released some of them there as well. So Kentucky, Tennessee, any of these areas here could actually see these types of creatures uh, or super soldiers as a result. Listen to this here. And I worked at the Mount Sterling Advocate, a local newspaper here in Kentucky for three years. There were just a lot of farm animals were mauled. It was over and over the same type of attack. It was the face off, the ears were off, the tongue was out. I think it was over like a span of five weeks that this happened. Um, none of them were eaten, just mostly just viciously attacked, like it was almost for sport. So whatever the creature was that did this didn't really leave very much, many traces behind. So it's just confusing um, to the residents. All the attacks happened at night. And so nobody really got a good look at it. People were very afraid. Um, a lot of people were um, taking extra measures to lock up their animals at night. Um, a lot of people weren't letting their children play outside. It did create a lot of panic in the area for months and months after, after the attacks. Um, I've spoken with some, a local cryptozoologist about the incidents, and um, I know that he's very credible, in my opinion, and he, uh, he's, he sort of related it to what could possibly be known as a barilla. 
In his 40 years of research, Ron has studied dozens of cases of bloody attacks attributed to Barilla. The Barilla's got a real habit of being able to disappear. It's an aggressive creature. Really the first modern sighting happened actually in 1944. Teenage boy was fishing. And it actually tried... Now he goes back to 1944 on one event that was recorded, which we know that's not part of the Super Soldier program. That's one reason why I believe in this documentary here, <clears throat> they may be dealing with an alien species uh, because there is an alien species known as a basically a werewolf type of creature. That is an alien, an extraterrestrial uh, um, species that does exist, and they are here on this earth. That has been known to happen before as well. <clears throat> but I wanted to play that because they were talking about, and this, of course, was not too many years ago, where they just killed for sport. Um, and that seems to be the case with these as well. Um, uh, let's see here. So, let's see. We've act I've actually covered a lot of my notes already here. Let's see. The original idea was to drop them. Yeah, we went into the Taliban, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to play for you now. Uh, the Back the video I played originally, I want to play a little clip here for you uh, on this here. And as the, uh, now I think this is being narrated. It's not the actual park ranger that was retired say, speaking about this. But I remember when I saw the image in here, and you can see this creature right here, it kind of reminded me of what I kind of imagined the creature would look like. And oddly enough, you're going to find out that's not very far off. Uh, but uh, it, even the, the description that this uh, park ranger gave, where he said he, he stands on his hind legs, but not like a dog would stand. So even in this image here, it, it depicts it more like the way a dog would stand. But you'll see why in a few minutes when I share with you the photograph there of why it is said he doesn't stand like that. Because the lower extremity was still human. Uh, but I'm going to play a little bit. First, I'll play the part about him being a, uh, a park ranger. Then we'll quickly fast forward to where I'd like for you to listen to this. Years of service. I've been a ranger at Yellowstone for 27 years. And I worked as a seasonal ranger eight years before that. I grew up in Montana, just outside of the park. My father was a ranger here. And my grandfather was a ranger at Glacier National Park. That's just to kind of establish what he did. Now I'm going to start it right around here in the five minute mark here. Let it play. As it plays, I will take you then to the photograph that I was able to obtain uh, of the, one of the super soldiers that was killed down in Brazil. The quality is not that great. I should be getting another as well. And I will release that one once I have that as well. Listen in. I kind of felt like I was outside of my body, watching myself look around. It's really hard to explain. That's when I saw it. About 30 yards ahead on the trail. It just came out from behind the trees. This area is known for grizzlies, but this wasn't a grizzly. It stood about as tall as one, but wasn't as wide. I've seen my fair share of grizzlies in 35 years of being a ranger, and I tell you, this was not a bear. I uh, will say as far as the height of these things, they average between seven to eight feet. So even though when they started off as a super soldier, having this gene splicing done to them, this DNA manipulation, uh, they did not, they were not at that time, um, they were like six, six and a half feet tall, most of the soldiers that participated in the program. So... The thing is, is that DNA and that gene splicing did such a metamorphosis that they ended up closer to eight foot tall. So let me just continue to play that. It was still daylight, but I was in a heavily wooded area on the trail. The visibility was good, but it was shaded from the canopy of the trees. I was already feeling panicked. And they say that when you have a panic attack, the fight or flight response kicks in. Well... I froze. I literally couldn't move. I couldn't even grab my radio in that moment. This massive creature walked out onto the trail, so now I could see it in full view, full visibility. It was a gigantic dog-like creature, something like out of a movie. It was standing on its hind legs, but not like a dog or a wolf would. 
It was standing like it was supposed to be standing, like it was designed to be upright. It was covered in fur, but its coat wasn't full or thick. It was like spotted and mangy, like a sick dog or something. I couldn't make out what color it was, but it was dark brown or black. It was too hard to tell from the shade from the trees. It had these yellow eyes, kind of like cat eyes, that were staring straight into my soul. That was the most terrifying aspect of this creature. It had a snout, but not something that I've ever seen before. It was slowly moving across the trail while its eyes never left me. I was frozen. I didn't want to move. I couldn't move. It was all I could do to keep standing while this creature was staring at me. The entire encounter happened for a minute, but it felt like an eternity. I glanced down at my radio to grab it, and by the time I looked up, I heard it run off into the woods. Now, I've seen deer run through the woods at amazing speeds, but this was something else. I saw it disappear into the woods faster than I've seen any deer traverse the forest. I just encountered an alpha predator. I was still standing on the tree. That's another thing I wanted to mention to you as well, is that uh, I've been told that they can leap up into a tree with no problem. Uh, the stealthiness of the lion DNA was part of that uh, purpose there. And of course, their speed is incredible. Uh, but then again, so is the Bigfoot. We've been, I've been told that Bigfoot can run at over 100 miles per hour. Uh, but that's not the same thing as a super soldier here. I don't know what their speed is. I haven't actually inquired about that. But uh, that's the best I've known on that. Anyway, uh, let's see here. We're going to go into David Politis here in just a moment here. Uh, I want to play the clip with David Politis as well, where they interview him uh, going into what was happening there in the National Forest. So let's listen to this clip here. And this was actually done by uh, a local CBS channel, Channel 8 there, uh, where they interviewed David Politis. Listen to this. The IT team's George Knapp is here with the story. George. That's not a revelation to say that people get lost out in the wilderness or in forest areas. We're talking about a different kind of mystery, though. Disappearances that are not caused by predator attacks or criminals hiding out there in the woods or just bad luck. A former cop has put together hundreds of case files regarding clusters of missing persons in national parks where the circumstances are flat out strange, but don't expect any answers from the park service. At the end of the night, I was staying in a uh, motel off the government or off the park service land. I get a knock on the door. The person who confided in law enforcement veteran David Politis was a government employee who told one heck of a story about people who vanish in national parks, places like Yosemite, but also national forests, including the Toyabe, west of Las Vegas. In the years since the knock at the door, Politis has scoured small-town newspaper archives and pestered federal agencies for records. He found so many cases of missing people that a planned book became two, filled with more than 400 cases of people who went into national parks but never came out. People disappear in the wilds all the time, and we're talking about something different. These were unusual things that don't make sense that happened to cluster together, cluster together in three to four, sometimes as many as 20, 30 people missing at one location. The individual cases are strange enough, Politis says, but stranger still were the reactions of federal agencies when he asked for public records. And when we foia them, we got a response back that they don't keep any lists of missing people. The response was not... Yeah, that's kind of to be expected, no doubt. Uh, anyway, I wanted to share these things with you because uh, it is a very horrifying story, but yet uh, at the same time, very terrible and tragic story as well. Because what about, like I said, what about these soldiers that participated? What about their families? Whatever happened to them? What's the deal on this? I have no clue, no idea whatsoever. And as, as outlandish as it may sound, there's a lot of evidence that supports it. Uh, and that's, that's the very strange thing. The things that David Politis has done, uh, other documentaries, things like that, testimonies that have come forth uh, that have described the way the creature looks and stuff. And often the, the, the hair is spotty and uh, spotches, what do you call it? Uh, like on parts of the body and not other parts of the body. 
Um, and, you know, gene splicing, DNA manipulation, you know, I, I just, I can't even begin to tell you how, how is it done? You know, I, I have no clue. But uh, to think that, uh, that people would actually be willing to volunteer for that type of, of, of program, uh, I'm sure that when they volunteered, they had no idea that it was going to end up like this. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, trust that you will have a blessed day. And uh, I hope we got responded to all the people over on Patreon that we had emailed that were asking more about uh, Yana and why she has been out of the ministry so long. She's beginning to disclose some of that information. And uh, so she, we have written back, I guess, about 500 people that have requested to know more about that. Uh, if you would like to, 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 to get that response from her, you could also email us again at... Um, Israeli News Live at protonmail.com. But be patient. It does take time to respond one letter at a time. Thank you and God bless you.